the end of chapter 1, Ephesians 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Chapter 2. And you he hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's Satan, okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Here you go. He's getting doctrine right now. This is doctrine. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which Christ hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were with Christ, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made close, near. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments. Oh, no, there we go. Here's Paul throwing it out. It seems to me he's throwing out the commandments in the trash. What does it say? Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity nearby and came and preached peace to you which were far off, were, which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. That's right. There's your fourth temple. I don't know why they call it the third. Why do they call it the third temple? It was Solomon, Zerubbabel, and Herod all rebuilding that thing, building and rebuilding that thing. It's the fourth. Why do they say it's the third? I don't understand that either. But you see... That temple is not made of hands. This is the temple in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. It's not a building. No. Nope. In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Got it? There's, there's the temple right there. It is not brick in mortar, in stone. 
in, in whom all the buildings that we frame together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit.